Hey guys, and welcome back to Trimmer Trails. Hope everybody's doing well. I am super excited about today. After months and months and months of research, going to different expos, talking to different people, talking to manufacturers, putting my hands on products, I believe in my humble opinion that we have found the best truck wedge camper that is currently out on the market. Today, I wanna to introduce you guys to our brand new setup that we are running. Couldn't be more happy with it and introduce you to a company that has come online. Today is all about Dirtbox Overland's truck camper. Let's go look at it. One important thing I want to mention before we start diving into the video is that everybody can spend their money wherever they want. I'm not here to tell you what to buy or what not to buy. Really my goal with this video is to tell you why we wanted to go with the Dirt Box Overland and why I think it's so superior to the other manufacturers that are currently out there. Some manufacturers out there charge thirty to forty thousand dollars for a truck wedge camper. Other manufacturers are a little bit lower in price than what the Dirt Box is but at the same time they're kind of flimsy and put together with some screws and nails it feels like. Obviously do your own research, but I have a feeling after you've done all your research, you're gonna to come to the Dirt Box and see why it's a better mousetrap. All right guys, so what we're looking at here is Dirt Box Overland's truck canopy, also known as the original Dirt Box, the OG. First and foremost, Dirtbox Overland is a fairly new company, but the owners are not. They saw a hole in the market and decided that they wanted to make something that would fit that hole, and that's why they came up with the name Dirtbox Overland. Dirtbox Overland is owned by Jay Couch of Jay Couch Industries. If you know anything about uni mogs out there, the big earth roamers, the massive machines that come from military and then get built up, that travel all over the world doing expeditions, that is Jay. He has over 20 years of modifying, building, and custom making these things for millionaires down to off-road enthusiasts. So this is not a startup company by any stretch of the imagination. These guys have been in the industry for decades and are avid overlanders and off-roaders. Hey, my name is Jay with Dirtbox Overland, also with Couch Off-Road Engineering. My mainstay with uh, the Overland World stuff has been primarily the Mercedes Unimog, which is these very large expedition vehicles that we take for traveling all around the world. They're uh, a very high dollar product. They take a long time to build. And over the years of doing this, I have people all the time that want to kind of follow suit, but they just don't, you know, they don't have enough money to buy an extra house or two. So we've created the Dirt Box brand. What's beautiful with Dirt Box is it's taken 30 years of experience from traveling the globe, doing things the wrong way many times and doing it right a lot of time as well. And we've been able to take that experience, that global experience and uh, engineering, design, fabrication, extreme off-road, extreme rock crawling, extreme distance travel, and all culminated into our effort, which is called Dirt Box Overland. We've seen a lot of products out there that are pretty good, but ridiculously overpriced. We've seen some stuff that's extremely subpar and just not good. So we're coming in to try to fill that middle ground to create the best product for the best dollar value for the average consumer. The stuff's still not cheap, but nothing good is. This is just not overpriced and not completely, you know, out of, out of reach. The Dirt Box product is something that we've been striving for that we could reproduce for everybody out there. There are so many things that set this wedge camper apart from the competitors that I don't even know if I'm gonna be able to get to it all in the video. I don't wanna make it some long, boring video, but there is so much technology and so much craftsmanship that went into this thing that we would be remiss if we didn't mention a bunch of them. Just off the top of my head, a couple simple little things. This whole unit is welded or riveted together with T6 aluminum. If you know anything about aluminum, most most of the manufacturers are using a lower grade aluminum. This is more robust and even stronger than the top manufacturers that are out there. So, you know, one of the one of the big things that stands the dirt box product away from everything else is the copious amount of extrusions all over the place. Basically, if you're old enough like I am to have a Play-Doh Fun Factory where you put a bunch of Play-Doh in a machine and it's shaped like a star and you squish it through. You got spaghetti. You got the spaghetti. By yourself or with the gang, you can have a Play-Doh party. It's fun basically what an aluminum extrusion is. You heat up the aluminum, you squeeze it through into a certain profile, and you come out with something like this, or it could be this, or it could be this. It could be anything you want, basically. But 
an aluminum extrusion, because I could put it to the exactly the shape and the profile that we want, I could get rid of a lot of extra material. I could do all these tight bends that you can't usually do with uh, aluminum because you create weak points. With the extruded aluminum, we harden this to a T6, which is pretty much your superior overall, call it aircraft-ish type hardness. You go a little bit harder, but then it gets brittle. The extrusions are hiding all over this thing. We have in our whole lineup for all our products, 59 custom extrusions. So basically, if you end up looking at this piece back here, you see an extruded piece of aluminum through here, and then you also see a square tube here. It looks like it's just square with a broke over section. That's not really what it is in essence. It's actually this piece right here where she fits in that. So here's what looks like an outside tube, and here's the extrusion, but then here's our breakover where the door seals into that. You can see there's a lot going on. We have ceiling surfaces, we have lock-in tracks, all the way around through this. This crazy looking piece here is actually up in his bed right through there. So that goes the whole perimeter of this thing. What's neat about that is we have a nice hardened aluminum track system to bolt things into. It's a lip system that in locks our whole system together. And then the other cool thing is we have caps on each corner. You could drill a hole through each one of these guys and use this as your wire chase throughout the whole deal. When you don't use an extruded piece of aluminum, you go to a weaker piece of aluminum, which is either a 2000 or a 5000 series. Every time you bend it, it gets a little bit weaker. Every time you weld it, you have a heat affected zone that's weaker. Your typical manufacturer doesn't have the, the bankroll to do all these extrusions. They're very expensive. So they're forced to have to use a 5000 or 2000 set, uh, series set of of aluminum. A, it's cheaper. B, it's just the only option that they have. It's not that they're being cheap. It's just that this stuff's really expensive to do this many of them. We just happen to have that part of the market really well dialed in because of our experience with some of our higher end equipment or over the years. On top of that, everything is engineered R and D out there in Denver and put through strenuous tests before it ever comes to market. The dirt box has been all the way out in Death Valley and 122 degrees and heavy wind has been up to the Arctic Circle in negative 30 degrees has literally been opened and driven around Moab to see how it would hold up with the tent being open because the guys just get crazy about their stuff. From the T6 aluminum down to their gold wing doors, the lines that they came up with, the way that the structure is put together, all the way down to their gaskets that are the same gaskets that BMW uses on their vehicles. They really check all the boxes when it comes to high quality, long lasting stuff. Some of the other nice options that you'll see on the dirt boxes, is we'll typically always have L-Track up here for you. If we don't have it, it could be added as well. So there's reinforcement set up behind this door. One very critical thing, grab any other unit out there, damn near any manufacturer, and try to twist the twist the doors. They're not gonna give them as much of a fight as this is. The nice deal with this stiff door is you could put uh, water tanks, fuel tanks, traction boards, everything on there. You could change your different positions of your height angle on this as well. There's illumination that can be changed from a full strip to just twins. You could put uh, molly panels in there. Again, and it's that interchangeability. We have twin compression latches here, which are nice. The actual hinge that, excuse me, not the hinge, but the seal that goes through that is actually an automotive grade hinge. It's the same setup that we're using on some of the BMW, uh, BMW sedans. We like the pliability and we do a lot of testing in extreme, extreme cold weather testing that we can't even achieve up here in Colorado. We're actually doing this up in the Arctic. So we found that that ends up holding up the best in call it 36 below plus weather, which most people aren't gonna have, but you know that the longevity is gonna be amazing. The other bonus is with these latches, you've got a key lock in here, and you've also, if you're down in Mexico or whatever, a padlock. Somebody sees a padlock on there, they know there's no sense in even getting in, or at least trying, because it's gonna take them too long and it's gonna thwart them away. The other thing that's gonna be happening pretty soon here is we will have our power lock system. We've been working on that for quite a while. We've gone through five different manufacturers cycling at 10,000 times, but then we throw this whole assembly with the power lock mechanism into the mud, literally mud and sand, and the best cycle times we've been able to get is about 2,000. We're really trying to reach four, 5,000 wishful thinking, but uh, we have one that seems to be holding up very well. So you'll be able to come by, hit your key fob, and unlock everything. That too is gonna be retrofitable to anybody that's purchasing your products over the years. Now we were in the rooftop tent and truck rack setup for about a year. However, for us, we needed more space and we wanted more room to be able to put everything in its proper spot instead of carrying a bunch of boxes. Going with a camper wedge style setup, we can now build out shelving units and we can put everything in its proper place. And honestly, that was the main deciding factor for why we wanted to switch over from the rooftop tent to the camper wedge. With that being said though, I had some non-negotiables. Number one, the main non-negotiable for me 
was that if I went to a camper wedge, I could not add any width whatsoever to the truck. Some of the manufacturers out there are gonna throw another six inches to eight inches off the sides of your truck. If you've seen any of our videos, you know that we get into some tight trails from time to time. And if we were to get into a camper wedge that made our profile even wider, it was just gonna be a no-go. We wouldn't be able to do those trails. It would be too tight and sketchy and we'd probably end up damaging it. From the dirt box overland, as you can see from the lines of this unit, we actually did not increase our footprint at all. As a matter of fact, our running boards are still the furthest thing out on the vehicle, including our awning and our privacy shower that we'll get to here in a minute. So footprint was a huge, huge thing that we had to make sure we didn't expand on. The second thing I wanted to look at was weight. Some manufacturers like the GFC are a super light setup and you're not gonna have to worry about weight. However, you get to some other manufacturers and they are super Super heavy. You're ranging from 800, 900 pounds. With the Dirtbox Overland, it weighs in at 425, which is practically nothing for the trimmer itself due to the payload. Unless I'm slapping down 600 pounds of gear in the back, which I would never end up doing, I am perfectly safe and content with my payload. So the Dirtbox checked in right in that spot where I wanted to check in while still being a strong and sturdy structure. The third thing that was a non-negotiable for me was I didn't just want to put a box on the back of my truck. There are several manufacturers out there that just literally slap on some doors and you're going down the road and you look like a box with a big cell on top of your truck. Obviously, we spend lots of money on our vehicles and we want them to look cool. I think with the dirt box, the way they created their lines to give an aesthetic look and a beefy superior look, definitely check the box for me. The last thing I wanted was to be in a big square box and walk outside and look at my truck and go, man, that's ugly. As vain as it may be, we spend a lot of money on our trucks and we want them to look cool and mean when we're out there on trails. So aesthetics are important to me. With the dirt box, you can just take one glance at it and realize this thing is built well and has aesthetic pleasing lines that actually match up well with not only the Ford, but with the Jeeps, with the Tacos, and even the Chevys. We cover a broad range of all these vehicles. It's not one size fits all these. We change almost every single one of these. There are a couple crossovers for sure where other manufacturers can't make one fit every single vehicle. It's just too expensive to change out all this stuff. But because of the use of all our extrusion technology, you can move your bolts where this bolts onto a section here, here, or 10 feet up and down the thing. So we get to use the same extrusion for that one design, but it could fit seven different vehicles because we could bolt it at different spots instead of having to weld it together at all these different locations. That is a huge difference. There are no compromises. It is just well engineered, well thought out by people that enjoy beating themselves out in the wilderness and also sitting back on the beach and drinking the Corona every now and then, you know? All right, so looking at the back of this truck, as you can see, we do have an actual window. This wasn't necessarily a deal breaker for me when I was looking at other manufacturers, but to be honest with you, I kinda had a bad feeling about it. I wanna be able to look out my rear view mirror when I'm going down the highway and make sure that an 18 wheeler is about to slam into me. On top of that, the added bonus though is, if you're in bad weather, you're out camping in the snow, or just on a rainy day, you're gonna be able to hang out in the truck bed itself, and you're still gonna have light coming through without getting wet, which is obviously a bonus, especially when the days get short in the winter. Now, something I really do appreciate about Dirtbox is they listen to their consumers, they listen to us guys that are out there on the trails using their products, and they're constantly thinking about refining how to make this product even better than it already is. So the first doors that we've been running for a few years are just a square door with twin latches on the outside, no window. We could put a window in it, but basically you had to order it with that window cut out. What we've got on this one is kind of an in-betweener, but the new door will have this same basic window set up here, but instead of uh, being the window, it's going to be a blockout plate of aluminum. All of them will come that way. What's nice about that is if you want to switch up to the window later on, or you realize that security is more important than being able to see, you could go one way or the other by changing out the rivets on here and you could go to a window setup or the block out plate setup. Some people will want to have ventilation for their dogs. We could do one on the front or do it on the rear of the same setup. And you could actually on the aluminum block out plate, put like a small fan in there to help bring in cool air and then push it out through the rest of the truck. The other thing that's gonna be different is we typically use the twin latch system out here it's solid, it's stout, it works, but it's two handles. Yeah, you know, it's nice to have one. A lot of people are doing that single handle. We've developed what's gonna be retrofitable for this one and everybody else. In fact, we're giving them to everybody free. The new one will have a center handle right here. The importance of this automotive style lock mechanism is we've got a lot of movement left to right. 
with the advent of the new Tacoma, uh, the new Tundras, I should say, where the beds flex like a rubber band, even with the stiffeners in there. On our brand new Tundra, when we tweak it out rock to rock with wheels in the air, I could put my hand in between the corner. That new Tundra, the 2023 Tundra, is the same class as this vehicle here. We need that style door on the Tundra because it keeps pulling off. TJ's does not seem to flex like that. In fact, none of the newer series Fords have that flex issue that we're having. And payload, it can actually carry the Toyota. So there is that advantage with going with the uh, Ford truck over that. Even, you know, this is nothing new in the Toyota world. The uh, Tacomas have always been flexi flyers in the beds. The Tundra, unfortunately, is the same same story, sadly enough. But uh, but no big deal. It's It'll be covered with that latch setup. Instead of having a cable system in there, we will now have a push rod system that is hidden be behind a piece of extruded aluminum. Really nice, no flex, no give, solid push rods, easy to adjust if needed, and cleanly hidden behind that. We like upgrading everything. We like changing things to make them for the better. And the bonus to that is you as a consumer receive, you're on the receiving end of getting cool stuff upgraded as things move on. But we've come up with something better. Therefore, we wanna share it with you guys who've already purchased or are looking at purchasing. So you will always see upgrades and improvements moving along with our products. And again, like I stated before on the modularity, those are all retrofitable to your existing product that you currently have. They come up with ideas all the time for overlanding and off-roading. They will build a little gizmo and test it out to see how it works right there in Denver, Colorado. Being able to call somebody and get them on the phone immediately is a huge selling point for me when it comes to buying something at this price point. I wanna know that I have great customer service and I wanna know if the guys stand behind what they're selling. Now that I've kind of introduced you guys to who Dirtbox Overland is, what this unit is all about, let's finally get to walking around this thing and see what our rig setup is. We have the Dirtbox Overland 270 awning. If you notice that this awning is actually more squared out, super easy to pull out and put up. The bag is an expanded bag. You don't have to be some scientist to know how to roll this thing up. You simply roll it up, strap it in, zip it back up, and you're good to go. Ease of use with this awning is incredible. It takes all of five seconds to get it done. I'm a little short because the truck's so tall, so I got to use a step stool, but putting it back together, as you can see, is super easy. It's actually a little windy today. We're having gusts from around 20 miles per hour. You do not have to put the legs down on this particular unit. There are legs, however, in case it gets really windy and you want to put the legs down, you can. Also, this awning has full lighting all the way across it. So if you're at a camp, you're going to have lighting out here to do whatever you want to do. Now on the other side of the truck, we went with the privacy shower slash bathroom. I've never been a big fan of these things because I never saw a need for them. Me and my wife, we're usually solo and I'm definitely a nature dude. I will go out a hundred yards, dig a little cat hole, do my business, cover it up and then come back. But when we started overlanding, not being solo like we've done for so many years and actually having friends come along, the privacy shower curtain was actually a game changer for me. And I'm a little bit humbled to say I get it now why people have pop-up bathrooms and showers. It's just super convenient, especially when you're hanging out with a bunch of friends. Now, if it's super windy outside, you do have some stakes where you can stake it down so that it's not going to move around on you. Putting it back up is just as easy. Like I mentioned, I am kind of small, so I got to use a step stool. But all you do is you push in the sides, you push the main bracket forward, and then you roll it back up. After that, you strap the latches back on and you are literally done. That pin locks it in and you are able to do some rough terrain without worrying about that thing popping out on you. One thing that I absolutely loathed about the rooftop tent was how long it took to get the rooftop tent set up and ready to sleep in. Obviously popping up the rooftop tent takes you all of a minute or two, tearing it down about three or four minutes, but getting all your crap in there to be able to go to sleep was always a nightmare. Whether you're using a blow up mattress, you're having to air that thing up, or you have to deflate that mattress because as we know, most rooftop tents, the mattresses are just plain junk, at least for me. I'm a side sleeper and I wanna be comfortable when I'm out there. I don't wanna be miserable. I wanna have a good night's rest. Usually for us, we go really hard out on trails and we get to camp as the sun's going down. We have about an hour to 45 minutes before that sun is down. So we gotta get to cooking, get ourselves dusted off, cleaned up, whatever it is, eat dinner and then go to bed. With this new setup, it takes me all of about five seconds to set it up and it takes me about 10 seconds to tear it down. 
Now, like I said, Dirtbox is always innovative and trying different things, and they did that with this mattress. This particular mattress is their newest generation of mattress, and to be honest with you, it is quite comfortable even for a side sleeper. I still want a little bit more bulk, so what I did is I went with a two inch memory foam, and then I put their mattress literally on top. I'm telling you, this is the best sleep that we have had in a long, long time. Of course, you can go out and buy a $500, $600 blow up air mattress for your rooftop tent or whatever, but I was extremely thrilled that Dirtbox has actually been trying to figure out a comfortable, comfortable mattress that you can sleep on. And for the most part, if you don't want to come out of the gate trying to do a memory foam or buy a more expensive mattress, I feel like this current mattress is going to do the job for you on several trips. Now, obviously for us, the most important thing about any kind of rooftop tent wedge camper is quality of sleep. If you're not sleeping well, what's the point of being out there? I'm happy to say that this platform sleeps very large and very well. You have well over six feet up there. I think it's like 6.5. I'll have to check with that and put it down on the screen. I sleep with my knee out a lot of times and I used to knee my wife when we were sleeping in a rooftop tent. We don't even touch each other anymore, so there is added space. Not all tops are made the same when it comes to these camper wedges. One thing that Dirtbox does is they use a one inch extruded aluminum with polysyrene, which is, all, which is a foam, and then on top of that foam, they add the car liner that you see right there. Not only is it aesthetically pleasing, but on top of that, it's actually protecting you from the outside elements compared to some other manufacturers. I'm not here to bash other manufacturers. I'm just here to tell you what I learned through this whole process and why I wanted to go with Dirtbox. Some manufacturers simply use a piece of aluminum and the only thing protecting you from the hot blazing sun or the freezing cold is that thin piece of aluminum. What I appreciate about Dirtbox is they really thought about this solution and made sure that they insulated the top of their box extremely well. As far as the roof goes, we've gone down a couple different avenues. Our ultralight tents, just our rooftop tents that we build, our, our Tellurica series, that is a honeycomb aluminum rooftop tent. We did that because it's got a little bit of insulative factor, minimal, but it's got some in there. Um, it's ultralight, it's strong. What it does not have is a lot of load carrying capacity and also when it comes to hail damage, it is because that tight, thin layer of aluminum on there, tight like a drum, it dents quite easily. So what we do with the dirt box tents, these are a little bit more of a rugged, it's a little more of an old school type of build. On the rooftop section, it is a piece of one inch extruded square tube throughout the whole thing. It's a grid network and that is all welded together and then ties into the exterior extrusions all the way through. So it's basically a grid framework. And then in between that is one inch extruded polystyrene. It's at about a 60 PSI, so it's a pretty stiff it's a pretty stiff rate. It's not your typical Home Depot pink stuff that's 20 PSI. We insulate it with one inch. We frame it with one inch extruded aluminum that is also a T6, so that's strong. And then along with that, we do an under layer of basically a padded, kind of a diamond stitch setup. And then the lights are incorporated into that. The neat thing with that setup is A, strong. B, it is actually insulated. C, say you're not feeling, you wanna sleep, you get in some of these rooftop tent setups and they're translucent on the roof. It is dark in that thing when you wanna close it up. The strength is huge. We have L-Track that runs down both sides of that guy so you can strap gear right on top of it. We've got the L-Track so we can put crossbars and all sorts of rails, roof rack, kayak racks, the extruded aluminum around the whole perimeter with the exterior mounted shocks or struts we should say, allow us to, besides changing out to a stiffer spring rate on those struts. We could add multiple struts in different angles to help uh, carry that lift. If you wanna carry a bicycle up there or if you wanna put kayaks up there, we could change the geometry of that. You don't have to buy a special unit. We just give you the struts and tell you the points where to mark it and that's gonna change all that. Another thing that is interesting too, if it's cold out, you'll see this nice smooth surface. If it's hot out, see a little bit of wave in that. We actually don't fully weld that thing on there. We leave that sheet attached in multiple points, but loose in others. And we found that through the insane weather that we been dealing with for the last few years here, hail damage. When you run that thing very tight like a drum, it gets impact damage from hailstones and whatnot. If you leave it a little bit loose, it's got a little bit of give to it and we're not having that kind of damage. So the rooftop is definitely one of the stoutest in the industry and it's got the ability to tie down all sorts of stuff, whatever you wanna put up on the roof. In regards to the roof setup, like I just, you heard me say, we've got extruded aluminum all over the place where some of the longer term well-known uh, brands that have been out there, for some reason, We'll do a square tube framework, similar to like what we're talking about, thinner, but then it's just covered up with carpet padding. It just doesn't make any sense. You're spending that kind of money and it's on your roof for crying out loud. I mean, that's where the sun's beating down on things. And not only that, if it's cold, that's where all your heat's escaping out the fastest. So thinking that just putting some indoor outdoor carpet glued onto this surface is, is 
doing anybody any favors is just not. Heavier reinforcement, more extrusions throughout it, and a massive amount of insulation and darkening, you know, that goes hand in hand compared to most of the higher ends out there. Yes, some of them are doing the same setup, although not so much on the insulation part, but we do feel that this is the long-term best solution, regardless of price, to our customers out there for a durable, well-insulated rooftop system. They're using high quality canvas with this. We were out on a windy night. It was pretty dang quiet, to be honest with you. Also, this canvas is not see-through. If you have light inside of the tent, you cannot see somebody on the outside. I appreciated that. Our final day, we didn't have any trails planned. We were just driving home. I didn't wake up till 10 a.m. and the sun was not beating me down at all. It was still dark up in there. Also, they have the rain fly that you can expand out, which makes for a really nice breezeway and a cool little lookout on top if you're interested in that. As far as the windows, they are massive. You get tons of breeze coming through these things, even on a calm day. So for being out in the summertime, I don't think it's gonna be a major issue about sweating yourself to death due to the top being insulated and having those large, large windows to keep breeze going. So let's talk about the power setup real quick. Something that's really cool about the dirt box is that they have a power distro at the back of the truck that has three switches on it. They also have two USB ports and a cigarette lighter up top so you can charge your phone through the night or watch your phone and not have to worry about draining it out. When you do one of our dirt box canopy tent camper setups, it's already wired, ready to go. 12 volt DC cigarette lighter out there power plug-in. We have a USB plug-ins here. We also have your main power box switch here, which I'm gonna turn on which then allows power to the main lights around me, which are independently on and off and or uh, dimmable. So right there, I just turned it on. If I hold my finger over the little blue light, I could dim that thing down, dim it down, dim it down, that type of thing. The other one is a button for up top that turns on the tent light. You also have an on off button for that up above you. There's kind of an amber colored light that's going along in the back here as well, just to keep the bugs down. The, this light can be switched around to be two thin strip lights if you wanted, or you could do this long strip light as well. Put your 12 volt to it, and then you also have a third brake light up there. Put your brake light set up and you're good to go. That's already included on in every one of these dirt box units. Now, as far as power goes on these guys, if you're trying to keep it really simple and you're mindful that you're doing some power draw, you can run this straight to your factory battery setup on there. But like on TJ's rig, he did an auxiliary battery back here that is being powered by his alternator and whatnot. That's the safest way to go. And it gives you more power to be able to draw things down longer. And if you kill that battery, whoopie doo da, no big deal. And then there are, you could even go up levels from that. You could do your auxiliary battery there, but you could also do in one of your big Molly boxes here, you could do maybe like a Jackery or a Blue Eddy or um, EcoFlow inverter system on there for so you got 110 power and you've got uh, uh, 12 volt dc power there's extra boxes that can be mounted in the head of this boxes be mounted on the sides those boxes can mount more of your electrical stuff like lithium ion batteries chargers dc dc charge controllers solar controllers so with that and the extrusions you can run the wiring in through the top allows you to custom wire this setup even off of just your truck battery you've got a decent amount of li life left but we always recommend doing a house battery back here, or there could even be one underneath the, uh, the vehicle itself. The power box does come standard with every dirt box. This is not an add-on. This is just a nice feature to have when you're out there camping. Now, one of the final upgrades that we did on our particular unit is we went with the billet package. It's a little pricey, but it adds a little bit of candy and even more reinforcement to the truck. As you can see, we have CNC'd aluminum hinges right here, and they also have an LED marker light, which just adds a little bit more bling to the unit as it reinforces it. Now I want to say there is nothing wrong at all with the standard hinges. These hinges have been engineered and designed and tested out. There's nothing wrong with them. But if you want to go even a step further and make sure that this thing is as rigid as it's going to be, you can go with the billet package for around $2,400. A gentleman up there in Eddie that has been in the industry for years and years custom makes these hinges one at a time. Eddie's known for putting things in outer space, literally. He also works with the military on some top secret things, but he enjoys making this billet package for people that want it because he says it's a stress relief for him. You can see they start with a solid piece of aluminum and then they are CNC'd into beautiful shapes that are super sturdy and really just accent the whole truck camper all the way around. We've got billet aluminum handle upgrade on this guy. He'll have the billet aluminum hinge set up on there, which also extends his warranty an extra year, which is nice. You don't need the hinges, but man, they're really cool. It also incorporates a secondary backup uh, auxiliary light on there as well. And it just assures foreverness as far as durability. So that's a nice item. 
as well. And again, we keep talking about the extrusions. Again, I've got extrusions through the whole parameter of this thing. I've got them on the top. That just means I could bolt on things or if TJ comes back to us, we're constantly upgrading and changing things, but we're keeping in mind our old systems. So whenever we do an upgrade, you could retrofit those pieces. Like if you want to upgrade to the new series door, you could go ahead and buy that door and bolt it bolts in. If we come up with a new system that's going to lock into the side, we keep that to match our old drawing. So customers that have bought something a few years ago don't feel left out. It's not like they're running an Apple four anymore and we're back up to 14, 15 or 22. We could add to your unit there so you're not feeling like you're dealing with old old equipment this constant availability to upgrade to keep your stuff modular it's kind of limitless we're basically coming up with as many excuses as we can to empty your wallet on cool shit. you don't really need it but it's really cool to have is it a little bit of overkill maybe but i wanted the best thing out there and i wanted the coolest looking thing out there as well and i think the dirt box knocked it out of the park with these reinforced hinges and these handles on the back so keep that in mind if you want to do that if you don't do the billet package you'll just have three standard hinges that are well more than capable of keeping that dirt box lasting for years to come one thing i failed to mention about the lines of this box is that when i am using my mirrors on the side of the truck i cannot see the box even with all the gear that i have pushed up onto the side of this thing. You don't see it back there in your mirrors. So nothing is clouding your judgment. You have regained all of your control as far as when you are out on trails navigating, nothing is blocking you. So kudos to them for really thinking about that and making sure that nothing was hindering the truck. It's adding to the truck, not taking away from the truck. As far as inside the truck bed itself, it's your creation, what you wanna do with it. It does come with a ladder that I actually appreciated because we don't have shelvings built out yet and you can easily crawl up and down using the ladder to get in and out of bed. It also locks in right here so it's up out of your way. So if you want to keep the ladder intact, you can do that. The other nice thing about the ladder compared to some rooftop tent ladders is it's actually angled so your feet don't hurt when you're walking up and down it. Really well thought out idea. Some people get rid of the ladder immediately, some people keep it, but it is standard on the dirt box so you have an option depending on how you want to build out the inside. Which kind of brings me to add-ons. Dirt box, this isn't their only product. They make truck beds and they also have a wide range of accessories. They have all kinds of different products that are accessories that add on to this dirt box or are freestanding. They have several different kitchens you can look at. They have pull-out kitchens. They have all kinds of different molly panels. They have all kinds of places to mount and put things inside the dirt box themselves. So this really isn't a one and done company. They are constantly coming up with new ideas and new feedback from consumers of what they would like to have on their dirt box and they are building those things. Also, as you can see, we have extrusion all along the outside of the top, which means you could put any awning on it. You don't gotta go with dirt box if you don't wanna use theirs. Also with the extrusion all the way around, you have several different options to mount and hold things as you will. What are my overall thoughts about this thing? Honestly, it has checked all the boxes for me. And the few small things that I had issues with, they've already figured out ways to design them. And we're talking minuscule stuff. We got to camp with this thing about four or five times now. We've had it for about a month. And so far, we are both loving it extremely well. The versatility of it, the ease of use, the comfort, and just being able to not have to stress when you get to a campsite, trying to pull everything out of the back of the truck, and then try and figure out how you're gonna organize your bedding and all that stuff. It's just made it so much more enjoyable and fun. Which I think finally brings us all the way around to the question everybody's asking, well, how much does this thing cost? To be honest with you, it is priced perfect in the market. On some manufacturers, you can spend literally thirty to $40,000. I did it myself and mapped it out and I almost pulled the trigger on one of those things. But the deal was, I was gonna have a huge massive cell above the truck. I wasn't gonna be able to get into as tight spots. I was gonna be weighed down crazy. And I always say I had a hard time saying that I was gonna spend $35,000 on a camper wedge that was gonna go on the back of my truck. On some of the other manufacturers that were on the other end, they got the job done, but there was no frills to it. It was just basic setup. Essentially, I felt like you open it up and you're sleeping inside an old school Coleman tent on top of your truck. We want something that had a little bit more detail to it and was a little bit more inviting. Those were priced down around six, $7,000. For the dirt box itself, for the dirt box that you see right here, without the billet package, you're looking at $10,000. Yes, $10,000 is a lot of money, but at the same time, it is priced well inside the market. Matter of fact, I think it's kind of priced a little too skinny, but don't tell Jay that because then he might raise the price on us. 
For 10,000 bucks, you're gonna be able to be in this thing for years and years, great warranty behind it, and you're gonna have that ease of comfort of knowing that you have something that's not gonna fall apart when you get out on some crazy trails. We're really glad you guys took the time to look this all the way through and hear all my jargon going on. If you want to reach out, give me a phone call. Me or one of our sales staff, we could help you through some things. We're really happy to have TJ here. He's a good test. I'm not going to call him a test dummy by any means, but he's definitely a good uh, test rig out there to help us with the questions that a lot of you guys are going to have the same questions with. I've been doing this stuff for so many years, I kind of glaze over. I talk a lot of tech over people's heads. TJ is down to earth. He's like, hey, this goes into this and this is going to make what do this. This bolts onto here, how's it bolt to there, which sometimes we need to get reeled back into that. And generally, most of our help is a little more uh, friendly in that aspect. I'm just very techy. I'm kind of a geek that way. But that carries over to a very high-end product for a very reasonable price. And you guys are the only ones who are going to benefit from that. Have a good one. Thank you. All right, with all that being said and done, one final thing that I think is critically important because of content creators, I want you guys to know that Dirtbox did not reach out to us to do this video. Matter of fact, I found Jay. Me and the wife spent our own money on the Dirt Box and we couldn't be more happy with it. Dirt Box never reached out to us to try out this product. As a matter of fact, I came across Jay, called him on the phone. He actually answered, said hello. I drove up to Denver. I put my hands on the product. I said, I'm sold. I want one. How do we go forward? After a few months now, me, Jay, and the team out there at Dirtbox have become friends, and I couldn't be more proud to say that we have slapped them on the side of the truck. As you guys know, we only have a handful of sponsors that we religiously use out on the trails, and we stand behind our partners and those products. I'm proud to say that we're just coming on as an R&D guy. There's a couple things that I thought could be even better with the actual camper, which are minor itty bitty things, nothing structurally or anything like that. And they listen and they're Im implementing those things. On top of that, they have all kinds of different accessories and products that are always coming out and we're looking forward to trying those things out. So probably in the future you're going to see a video where we're trying out some more dirt box stuff and seeing how it works out. We couldn't be more humbled or thrilled to be working with them as a team as well as our other sponsors that have always stood behind us and been there for us. With that being said though, Dirt Box did want to extend an olive branch to all of you subscribers in case you're interested in something like this. You can use the code Trimmer Trails for one of the truck campers on their website they're going to give you $250 off. Also, if you're interested in any of their accessories, you can use Trimmer Trails 5. You'll get 5% off, which pretty much covers your tax for those accessories. They got some cool things over there. Go to the website and check them out. As for us, that's it for me. I'm tired of talking. I hope you guys have enjoyed this. If you have any questions or comments, hit me up down below. I will do my best to answer it for you. And of course, guys, until next time, we hope to see you out there on the trails. Bye.